Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I apologize for recently using different narrators in my videos. This is because the narrator I usually use has become difficult to access. Whenever I find a suitable replacement, I always encounter minor shortcomings with that narrator. So, in essence, I ask for forgiveness for this issue. Hopefully, things will improve in the future. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Like all living creatures, people need to eat to live. Some people, eaten from within by a demonic force, try to deny others this basic sustenance. All across the world, people are starving, because the powerful and wealthy create economic and political conditions that allow their wealth to be built on the backs of the world's poor. It is an old story, constantly updated. It is one form of official terrorism. From the Irish famine with its terrible aftermath created by the imperialist British government in the 19th century that caused the death of between 1 and 2 million Irish, and the forced emigration of more than a million more between 1846 and 1851 alone, to today's savage Israeli genocide and forced starvation of Palestinians in Gaza, the stories of politically motivated famine are legion. In their wake, as the historian Woodham Smith wrote in 1962 of the Irish famine, it left hatred behind. Between Ireland and England, the memory of what was done and endured has lain like a sword. This Irish bitterness toward the English was strong, even in my own Irish-American childhood in the northern Bronx more than a century later. Ethnic cleansing has a way of leaving a livid legacy of rage toward the perpetrators especially in the Irish case when talk of one's ancestors' perilous forced emigration on the coffin ships was ever broached. Today's Israeli government leaders must be historically ignorant or suicidal, for the Irish rage at the British led to the Easter Rebellion of 1916 and the eventual establishment of the Republic of Ireland, where today, in Dublin, its capital, huge throngs march in support of the Palestinian people and their fight against Israel. Do the Israeli leaders think that they can evade the lessons of history? Lessons that oppressed people everywhere learn from the irrepressible Irish rebels? Like their arrogant British imperialist counterparts, they have self-anointed themselves a chosen people, so they can inflict death and suffering on the unchosen ones, the animal people, those disgusting creatures not deserving of life, land, or liberty. But starve, torture, and slaughter people enough, and the flaming sword of revenge will exact a heavy price. Dark furies will descend. Dehumanize people enough, take their land, and the day always comes when the wretched of the earth rise up against their racist colonialist settlers. Deny the bread of life to people long enough so that they watch their emaciated children die in their arms, or search for their body parts beneath the bombed rubble, and you will find that the terrified have become terrifying. Franz Fanon wrote accurately about the link between bread and land, for a colonized people, the most essential value, because the most concrete, is first and foremost, the land, the land which will bring them bread and, above all, dignity. Without bread to eat, as Marx and Victor Hugo told us in their different ways, the desperate become desperados. The poet Patrick Cavanaugh, in his haunting long poem, The Great Hunger, concluded it thus, The hungry fiend, screams the apocalypse of clay, in every corner of this land. Lines that with a slight difference pertain to every land, where famine is used as a weapon of war. But why is this so? What is this demonic force that drives some human animals to oppress others? I think we can agree that humans have animal needs of hunger, thirst, sex, etc. that need to be satisfied, but that we also are symbolic creatures, angels with anuses, as Ernest Becker has said so pungently in his classic book, The Denial of Death. We live in a world of symbols, not merely matter. Unlike other animal species, we have made death conscious, and must deal with that consciousness one way or another. We have beliefs, 
ideas, symbol systems, and get our sense of self-worth symbolically. Of course, the anuses are the problem, because they remind us that despite all our highfalutin fantasies of omnipotence of the symbolic sort, what goes in one hole comes out the other, and like those backdoor hole deposits, we too are destined for underground holes in the earth. But this is unacceptable. The thought of it drives many savagely crazy individuals, groups, and nations. So, as Becker writes, an animal who gets his feeling of worth symbolically has to minutely compare himself to those around him, to make sure he doesn't come off second best. Herein lies the root of competition and the desire to be successful and hoist the symbolic trophies that declare us winners. And if there are winners, there must be losers. If I win and you lose, then I can feel superior to you and good about myself, at least in the realm where we compete. Equality is a problem for humans, whom Nietzsche termed the disease called man. This sense of competition can be relatively harmless or deadly. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. History is replete with the latter type, where the fear of not being immortal leads to the extermination of others, as if to say, See, we are number one. You die, but we live. This is the case with the present Israeli policy of genocide of the Palestinians through famine, bombs, and guns. The chosen enemy is always considered dirt, pigs, reduced to animal status not worthy to exist, and in a transference of existential trepidation emanating from a deep sense of insecurity masked as triumphalism, must be eliminated because their very existence threatens the oppressor's godlike sense of themselves. There is physical hunger, and there is symbolic hunger. Each needs satisfaction. In a just and equitable world, the hunger for bread would be easy to satisfy. It is the symbolic hunger for an answer to death that poses the deeper problem and causes the former. For in a world where people could recognize their fears and deep-seated anxieties and stop transferring them to others, the bread of truth might reign. We might stop slaughtering and starving others to purge ourselves of the self-hate and insecurity that drives us to feel the love of our fellow victimizers, but the hate of our victims. No one would be number one. All would be chosen and feast as equals at the table of the bread of life. If only the Israeli and U.S. government leaders were wise enough to read, they might read Herman Melville's Moby Dick and turn from the path of their joint obsession to obliterate the world for a trophy that they will never hoist. Ishmael might reach them with his words, For there is no folly of the beast of the earth which is not infinitely outdone by the madness of men. And they might seek peace, not an expansion of war. If only. But I dream. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.